Morning, everybody. Steve up at the property. And uh, today, we're gonna work on the John Deere LA120 automatic, my most recent purchase. So I went to Tractor Supply, and I got this, um, what is this called? Traveler Lord and Garden. I got the uh, most powerful cold cranking apps, amps. It was 350 cold cranking amps. I don't know, but, you know, of course they hit me for like a $10, $15 core charge. And of course I don't have a car cause, uh, core because the mower didn't have a battery in it. So today I want to get this, or and or tomorrow, I want to get this thing running and operating. Before I start buying a lot of stuff for this tractor, I want to make sure that it it starts and the training's good. First thing we want to do is smell the gas. I don't know how long this thing's been sitting, um, but we're going to smell the gas. We're going to check the oil and uh, we're going to put the battery in, see if it turns over. Uh, step one, let's smell the gas. It doesn't look bad. Doesn't smell awful. So, I'm going to leave what's in there. We're going we're gonna, to we're gonna try it. The um, gas filter. Doesn't look particularly filthy. Okay. Doesn't smell like gas. It's got some viscosity to it. All right, so the oil doesn't seem bad at all. Doesn't seem like there's any water. It's not black. Soil seems good. So I don't think this really sat for a hideously long amount of time. I'm pretty sure we could run it just to see if it could run. We get the thing running, we'll stop, we'll go to tractor supply, get a fuel filter, get an oil filter, get oil, and we'll do an oil change on it. We'll also get a spark plug, why not? All right, let's put the battery in. Oh, this thing is fighting me every step of the way. Very tight fit. Well, I gotta go to track supply. There's no um, battery bolts with this. Oh, well, that's unfortunate. We're off to a great start already. Back from tractor supply. They have the uh, this was in the back with the batteries, and it says Garden Traveler Garden Tractor Batteries Bolts and Nuts. And, uh, you know, same manufacturer as the battery. So I can tell you, I think they're uh, on the small side. <laughs> Okay. All right, the battery's, the battery's connected. Let's see if anything happens. Nothing.
All right, I'm here clicking. All right, probably just need to tap. Well, that's not good. That's loose. All right. We gotta look at that now. That's not good. Rat's nest. Oh. Yeah, Clark's head. Why in the oh maybe not. All right, let's see if we can get something on that. Might be a socket. All right, well that's tight. Tighter. It's got to be. There's only one bolt? That seems odd, don't you think? Oh, I get on there. Well, that's tight. Maybe it wouldn't engage because it's not a good enough ground. Maybe the starter's no good. Yeah, now it turns over. All right, all right. Maybe tough for you to see, but I get a socket on this one, but they look like this Torx head fitting on the inside because the other bolt holding in the starter, you can't get a socket on. So I have to get a Torx head on there so I have to find something. I have to find a Torx head. Ran to the tractor supply store. By the way, the people at the tractor supply store, very nice. Always greeted when I go in, always asking if I need help. Very happy uh, to go, I'm very happy to go in there. Very nice people. Three bucks, my bro. I got the Torx fitting, it's on an extension, $3.19 I think I paid. So, home run, looks like the exact tool I need. Hopefully, it gets in there. Come on. Okay, that worked. It looks like they sell these at a uh, at Walmart and at the Ace store. So uh, Ace is closer. I'm gonna go there. I had to do a little running around, but. Um, one of the local aces had the starter. So I bought the starter and I'm talking to the guys and now, you know, make sure, you know, the solenoid's good, that, that, this thing, the other, um, this, I'm like, yeah, yeah, and, ooh, I didn't think about the solenoid. And I said, you know what? Give me the solenoid too. Solenoid, $18. So, I'm going to replace the solenoid. It was clicking, and the starter looked fairly new. And, you know, I probably should have tested it with, um, you know, I think I have uh, jumper cables in the, in the truck. Probably could have just tested it that way. You know. Maybe I'll do that and bypass the solenoid and see if the starter actually is good. And let's see what happens. All right, well, that answers that. I'm just pretty sure the starter is good. I think the guy, the pre previous owner, 
It wouldn't start. He thought the starter was bad. He changed the starter. He didn't have the right tools, so that's why it was loose. And uh, he put the new starter in, it didn't work. He gave up and walked away from it. So, that's what I think what happened there. Okay, I just had to take a little break. I wanted to take a picture of where the wires go on the solenoid. Okay, I don't like how this cable is, but it will work for now. And I just want to see if this thing uh, will start. Ooh. Oh boy. You know what, I'm gonna take off the cables and I'm really gonna clean them up. And ho hopefully that does it. Well, I didn't clean the grounds. All right, let's give this, give it a shot. I didn't clean the grounds off. All right, let's, let's clean the grounds, try that. Okay. I. Clean the grounds, same thing happens. The uh, solenoid's clicking, but uh, not getting anything from the star. Hi right, guys, and uh, it's day two of the John Deere LA120 automatic ride-on mower resurrection, trying to resurrect. All right, let's uh, do a little recap on what we've done so far. All right, number one, got the new battery, 350 cold cranking amps. You know, I don't want a weak battery in there. Then when I hit the key, all I was getting was click, click, click. And I, gee, you know, never thought of the solenoid, but this black item with the red lead going to it is the starter. And when I touched the starter, it was loose. As I go by, and quite frankly, if you look at it, it's kind of black and shiny. There was some dirt on it, but I know that this, this thing's probably been sitting for a year or two. And I bought it from a woman who I believe you know, she's dating a guy, so I'm thinking maybe the ex-husband was trying to fix this. So, I found uh, an ace local that carries a starter. I went in there and bought the starter. And the gentleman said, listen, think about, take a look at the uh, you know, voltage before the solenoid, after the solenoid. Clean the contacts. I go, oh, solenoid. I never thought about that. So I bought a solenoid. I said, let me try that first. The solenoid's $18. And I installed that. Positive from battery to the solenoid. And then the other side of the solenoid to the starter. Doesn't matter which way. It's just a switch. You could, doesn't matter which uh, lead you put on which post. And then you got the ignition switch on top. Now, I was thinking maybe it's, you know, one of these safety features. Like the seat has to sense your weight. And it has to be this thing. Like the PTL, the drive, has to be disengaged. And plus you got the ignition switch here. I was thinking maybe one of those things are bad. But... If you're getting juice to the solenoid, that means all the safety features are working. So then it only has to be the solenoid, the starter, or something else. So I ran 
I broke out the um, jumper cables for my truck and jumped. I just powered the battery to the starter and the starter worked. So the starters uh, at this point, I think, is fine. Then I looked at all the, uh, I put in the, the new solenoid, same exact thing, click, click, click. So what I did next was, you know, usually like if you have like a bad battery, dirty battery terminal connection on your car, and you crank down on the uh, terminal, it'll start, it's because the connections are dirty. So I took off all the wires, <laughs> cleaned up everything with some sandpaper, same thing. The only thing I didn't do was the um, ground connection. Um, well, I did the, the uh, negative battery terminal. And I noticed, as you do, this guy's got two ground straps. I don't know if you could see it. There it is. You see? Both, both go to that bolt. I'm like, Jesus Christ. Another thing, this tractor, I don't know if somebody's been in it, but it's half English, half metric. So thank God I bought my metric sockets <laughs> and the extensions because that was really hard to get to. But with both extensions, with that right there, I was able to um, test that. It seemed kind of loose. All right. I got a strange feeling that's, that's the ticket right there. I'm praying because if that isn't it, I'm kind of lost. I bought a multi-tool, actually two multi-tools, and um, I'm hoping not to have to rip into this. So, weight's on the seat, this thing's engaged, this thing's off. Success! Oh! You know? You start thinking about starters, solenoids. It was that loose ground all along. Ridiculous. A couple of turns of a wrench. The guy before me tried a starter, put two grounds on. He put two ground wires on. Because he knew he had a feeling it might be a bad ground, but he didn't tighten the thing down. Frustrating, but at least I can return the starter that I spent $127 on. Okay. Well, I want to see if I can get this thing started. <laughs> now I got my starting fluid. Now the goal is just to make sure the thing runs. The thing pops off the least little bit. Then I'll uh, make a run over to Ace, return the starter, oil, filter, spark plug, and we'll do that. Beautiful. Now it's going to plan. It's amazing how something so small as a loose ground, it's the last thing I, well, I didn't start chasing uh, continuity and everything else, but I knew the solenoid was getting power and I knew the starter was good. So it had to be something like that. I cleaned every single connection, every single one except for the ground to the chassis and that i didn't even clean i just cranked it down and that's what i'm leaving it let's get the ace she's your 21 horse briggs and stratton this is the fuel filter i'll be replacing but pull the spark plug boot oh 
hopefully this is the right size. Yep. Just be careful when you wrench it on these things because spark plugs break easy. I mean, we're replacing these anyway. They look pretty good. I'll bring that. Champion RC. Let's see. I'll read it off to you. It's kind of dark in here. Champion RC 12 YC. All right, let's head to uh, tractor supply and then return the multimeters to ACE. And uh, I also picked up some gas treatment because stuff that's in here, if it's old, the gas tank's in here, it's, um, mm. I know it doesn't stink too bad, but it's not going to hurt to put some gas treatment in there. Okay, there's not a lot of gas in there. I don't know how much this treats. <laughs> now, Before, I know it runs, but before I do that, I want to get the thing running and hopefully getting it to idle. That way, I, if it can idle on the gas that's in there, great. If it can't, it starts gunking up the carburetor, then maybe I got to take uh, the carburetor out but I, I, and take it apart and clean it. I don't think that's, I don't think that's necessary. So I'm going to try to get the thing to run. I got my starting fluids and I got some gum out. I want to get the thing to idle, get it warm, and then I could change the oil, get all the crap out. Uh, I like the fact this thing has two cup holders. <laughs> Maybe you need two beers for uh, to cut the lawn. I don't, th I don't think it'll run when I might get my fat ass off of the seat. Safety.
It runs. It's got a little surge in it. That's fine. Maybe I uh I'll look into that. I don't want to take the carburetor off this thing. I'm hoping I use it. I clean it out. Use a lot of gum out. You know, the thing will run without uh you know and I'll be able to use it. I just don't like that. Uh, I want the thing to be able to idle and run smooth. But that's a that's a tuning issue. It's warm. I'm going to uh change oil and do as much as I can. Um and we'll worry about fine tuning <laughs> another day. But I'm thrilled. Um 500 bucks for this. I got the cart and the snowplow. It's a home run. All right, let's, uh, I don't want to be kneeling down in the mud, so let's uh, roll it back. Well, you know, I'm going to see if I can get this thing to boogie around a little bit. And then we'll, um, that'll warm up the motor some more. I don't know if I could ran it long enough to get the operating temperature and uh, see if we get the thing to move and then um, put it back there, change the oil, change the filter gas filter, put in some fresh uh, gas, we'll be good to go. Okay, well. Got it running. Now it's not moving. So uh, I rolled it back into the garage. I want to crawl underneath. See uh, what's what. Okay, so I'm not uh, fully, you know, brought up to speed on how to operate these things and all the controls and everything. But I remember there's that little, there's a little pull rod in the back of the machine, I guess, to park it or so it won't move. So I noticed it was all the way out. I pushed it in, got it, started it, and pushed forward, and it moved a little bit. So I'm pretty sure this is it. <laughs> let's, uh, let's start it and just drive it around just a little bit hoping that's it then we're in good shape then we'll uh, do the maintenance Success. Let me show you what I was talking about. See that little rod? You pull it out, it locks it, locks the machine up, push it in, and you're good to go. I'm sorry, missed this. Thought I had this uh, set for record, but I took out the old fuel filter. Just squeeze, these are squeeze clamps. Just squeeze them with the pliers. Move them up, let them go, and then you, you just pull the old uh, fuel filter out, put it in the new one, and you grab your pliers and move the uh, clamps back into position to hold the, the new filter in place. I uh, change one spark plug over, and I do the other one on the other side next, then we'll change the oil. Move over to this side, get this spark plug. All right, all right, guys. Uh, the situation is this: the two 
catch basins I have them for cars. And uh, they're not very tall, but I can't get them to catch any oil. If I take the oil filter off, I try draining the oil, it's, it's just going to make a mess. Now, I was thinking maybe I could just cut up one of the uh, five gallon uh, pails I have here. But I really don't have anything uh, here to cut it with. I mean, I have my knife, but <laughs> I'm not doing that. So I really don't need the machine right now. So what I'll do is I'll go home. I don't want to, um, I can't come up here on Sunday, so I'll come up again during the week. Maybe I'll spend the night again and uh, I'll do the oil. I'll fill it up with some fresh gas and uh, maybe we'll tool around with it a little bit with the cart, but that would mean me taking off the, the mower jack. And I don't know how big of a deal that is. I mean, I've seen YouTube videos of people doing it and they say it's not a big deal. I'll watch a few videos myself, see if it's something I don't mind doing. I really don't want to fight with the thing so I, I to get it back on so I can cut my lawn. But I'm told it's not a, a big deal. So we'll take a look at that. We'll do it next week. I appreciate you coming along uh, for the ride. I don't know if we're going to do one continuous video or break it up into parts. All right, guys. Thanks for tagging along. I'll see you next week.